Yeah. I was so excited for our women's conference. Oh my gosh, Michael and took me in the Hobby Lobby yesterday and bought a switch across the line. And we're just like talking about our plan. I hope that all you ladies are going to come Saturday, November 11th. Um, we're very excited. Um, if you haven't given Sarah your t-shirt size, please be sure to do so. We're making special t-shirts for our women's church. So. And we'll have t-shirts for our guests too. So. Um, anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies this morning? Ellen called. Her legs are all swollen and she's afraid she's getting cellulitis and may wind up back in the hospital and ask for special prayer that the swelling goes out and her legs heal up. Myron um, lost his billfold and his account was totally depleted yesterday, so it's causing a lot of anxiety and um, he was having a lot of heart palpitations and stuff going on just due to his anxiety and everything going on. So we just need to lift him up. Yeah. Um, I'd ask prayer for my nephew Sean in Portland. Um, he they um, diagnosed cancer on his tongue. Um, it's a very, I guess, treatable cancer, so it's not anything you know easily treatable, easily addressed. But um, been witnessing him for many, many years, and he's never really been receptive. So I'm just praying that this becomes an opportunity and that he is completely healed and that he can uh, get stitches and see the goodness of the Lord through his parents. Um, uh, my prayers are for it. My dad is doing great. Great. Um, he got a smaller cast. It's Lucky Green for our big trip coming up to Las Vegas. And, um, he's, you know, his other one is healing nicely. So that's cardiologist all as well. So I'm uh, very thankful for the Lord's grace through all of that. Um, anyone else this morning? Um, Jim, did you have something you want to share? Um, um, and all I was prayer for Joe. He had a thing kind of like Myron, but you know, he had some issues. And he's solving it, and it, he can get a phone, and hopefully he can get a phone here within another week. Um, you know how people are, if it, if it was an alcohol problem, wasn't Joe, it was his other friend. But it's, I don't go into details, but that's what happened. And he knows what happened, and we're seeking God's help. And I, can, I appreciate the anxiety. I don't need to be... Taking advantage of a work and uh, I, I gotta step up and play on the inside of it. I don't know uh, why Satan wants to do this. It try to push me by the limit, and I, I'm thankful <coughs> that I'm self-independent. <coughs> and we have to stand our ground, and um, I'm doing a lot better. I managed to, to jam with. Uh, Merle Shoot, Mike's friend, which was great out in uh, Hartford. If you ever get out in Martinsdale and meet out in Booney and play with those guys, and I weren't worked in my house and seen people for years I haven't seen. So it's uh, a great thing to uh, experience God's love and treasure out there. Uh, but uh, I wanted to tell you that. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I received a text message the other day. Um, we have a, a customer for our kombucha, and we deliver our kombucha to her because we've just always done it, and she's very busy, and she's a professor at the uh, Des Moines University. But um, she sent us a text message, and as they were doing their prayers with her four-year-old daughter, she said, and please bless those lovely people that bring us kombucha every week. <laughs> 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 Heart of a child. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for their prayers and uh, for standing with me for the situation back home. Uh, you know, I've been one of the few fortunate people that his entire family is intact. <clears throat> the one in my family suffered any damage. My mom's house was literally untouched. Yeah. Uh, so, no flood, nothing. Um, the only thing that's happening is that they don't have power. And then, because they have a well, and the well functions with an electric pump, mm -hmm. they don't have water either. Mm -hmm. So when they lose power, they lose water too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, my sister told me the other day, uh, you know, she started crying because she's a teacher, and she heard the baby that 
half their students lost their homes. And, you know, they're being asked to go to the schools and train them. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, the Secretary of Education wants to resume classes on Wednesday. There's no power in the water. Uh, but anyway, uh, so my sister said, it's almost like someone lit fire to the island and burned down to the ground. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. The other one is, you know, people now, those that don't trust, are getting desperate. And they're starting to do bad acts. The other day, a US soldier was kidnapped by two guys at gunpoint mm -hmm. so they could take him to an ATM and get his money. Well, that didn't work. So they took him to the gas station so he could pay for gas for them. And there were two cops in there, so they started to shoot out. No one was injured, the two robbers escaped. But the situation you know, is starting to become very dire. Help is, is there. Things are progressing, but not as fast as a lot of people would like, because most of the roads have to be cleared so they can get to the inside of the island. And then there's the strife that starts in your own family. And then my uncle, he hasn't been very helpful. Uh, uh, my family has, what they eat is that they buy a fast food in one hour because they can cook, because they don't have any gas. Well, my uncle got a full, a brand new protein thing, and he gave it to my sister's brother because we don't use it at the house. Why would you do that? You know, the Bible is very clear and it says you have to take care of your house first before you take care of anybody else. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't be compassionate. So then that starts my mom, which starts my sister too, and then my dad uh, wants to go. I do know that if he ends up going, He's going to provide a lot of help because he bought a generator and he's buying a gas stove and it's going to leave it with him. So that's going to help him out. But the, the biggest concern is my aunt, who's on dialysis. Uh, the dialysis is not working the way it should be being done annually. So the nurse told him yesterday that uh, she's trying to do everything possible not to get her in the hospital. There's a lot of hospitals that are going to be shut down if they don't get the fuel they need for the generators to operate. So just continue prayer for that situation to take care uh, fast and safely. That there's a huge movement of the Holy Spirit there, and people start to understand who's the source, so that they don't go take it from other people. One thing that I'm grateful for is that, uh, you know, in the eyes of the world, they have seen the spirit of the Puerto Rican people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very grateful to call myself one because we are very giving. You know, if you're struggling, if you're struggling I want to give you my hand and help you out. Uh, so for all that stuff to, to get figured out and then Potentially, the only thing my brother and I have been talking about is to bring our entire family here to the States, even if it's temporary, uh, so, so we can figure out the logistics of that, and then all the parties agree to do that, and then we can, we can have everything figured out and make that happen, because we're not all going to take. And, uh, you know, at some point, potentially, my sisters are going to run out of money because they're not working, so they're not going to pay. Mm -hmm. so, just continue for a lot. Mm -hmm. well, we have Senator Mike and Cindy who are taking a well deserved and completed vacation this weekend. The Lord blesses their time together um, with them and the Lord and the rest. Anyone else this morning? Yeah. Yes, we appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, praying and team prayer for my sister. She had uh, neck surgery this past mm -hmm. week and had an opportunity to uh, talk with her <laughs> last night. And she was doing a lot better. Uh, uh, it actually relieved pressure in the neck and it helped with circulation.
through her body. Uh, she just really tired. And our daughter lives in Wisconsin. She came down for a week here and helped her mom out a lot. We kind of uh, got some things together because she ended up having a little house fire and it burned up some stuff in the bedroom there. And our daughter came down and replaced it. And so I just <coughs> thank God for you know our daughter. Uh, believe her and mom is. And, and she just thanked the Lord that it went as well as it did. And, and also, I appreciate uh, the prayers for the job. We're, whenever we have um, a new instructors, then somebody has to train them and, and you know, observe them. But when people have been doing, you know, driving for a long time, and you got to kind of critique what they're doing, sometimes that goes good, and sometimes that doesn't go so well, you know. <laughs> but I just praise God. I said, I just want to be, you know, patient and understanding and realize that there's certain ways you got to do things at a school. So I just uh, thank for I think I've got the opportunity because somebody did the same thing to me, and I just want to have wisdom in that situation. So I just want to thank the Lord for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else? All right, let's stand and go to the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
God, we are your children, Lord. We have come to honor you this day, God, to hear your word for us, God, that we may go out and nourish this world with your goodness that you have brought to us. Lord, we just ask that you to be here through this service, God. We started off with praise, blessed the praise team, God. Enjoy the word that we hear today and our ears to receive it, God. Now we just ask that you bless this offering in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Before we start worship, uh, there's two things I want to say real quick. One, tomorrow is the last day of the Financial Peace University class. And I want to say it has been an amazing experience. I have seen chains being broken, people being blessed. I have been blessed, and I am very excited that I got the opportunity to do this. So, uh, if we can pray for all the people in the class that the wisdom they acquired through this past eight weeks stays with them forever, and their lives are transformed. Uh, I'm already thinking of when the next one's going to be. It's a little bit away, but I'm thinking I'm going to do it in March. So, if you can come, I strongly encourage you to do so because it is amazing. It will change your life. Uh, the other thing is we can pray for Myron. I think Myron got discouraged halfway through the course. That course? Not course. Course. <laughs> Sorry. It's my accent. <laughs> uh, and he dropped altogether from the class. Uh, so I know he's going through a difficult time and we can Pray for him so that the Holy Spirit gets a hold of him and shows him, you know, that it's all going to pass. Um, I would appreciate it. Amen. All right. I'm a little nervous today. I don't know why. So find us up. <laughs> uh,
no. I didn't know that yes. the Lord is yes. good. Yes. Taste and see. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Hey, I, I got the word when I was praying downstairs this morning. This might be for one of you, it might be for more of you. I, I know that I, it's a word I need to get marked for pride for sure. But the Lord says, rise up. Yes. His calling for you is not changed on your life. Right. You may have disqualified yourself, but He, His grace, has qualified you. Yes. His blood has qualified yes. you. Yes. So rise up. Yes. It's time for you to walk in your calling. Yes. 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 Lord, we thank you because you made us free from darkness. You open our eyes, open our ears, change our hearts. You replace our hearts with stones with hearts of flesh. You steered our spirit with your own Holy Spirit, where so we can know who you are and have your revelation. We thank you for breaking the chains of bondage that have us tied down to this world. And because of that, Lord, we are free. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, God. Ready, James? Thank you, God. Ready, James? Yes. I'll hold on for you, buddy. Oh, you good? Yeah. All right. <laughs> One, two, three, four.
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thanks, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, Roberto, for stepping up and leading the worship team. Thank you, all the worship team. Great job, as always. Let's give them a hand. Praise God. God bless you, ladies and the uh, Sunday school young people, if there are any, they be dismissed. Praise the Lord. I do want to remind you that we're still looking for more Sunday school teachers. And uh, if you find one, let us know. Praise the Lord. No, I'm serious. If you're interested, <laughs> or even if you're not, please step up here. Take a chance, hallelujah, to do something for the Lord and for the young people. And we'd all appreciate it even if you uh, feel like you can. Or would like to please let Jamie or Suzanne or myself uh, know and we'll be sure to make a spot for them. You can use some help, amen, so that they can get everybody rotating where we don't have one or two people always out of the adult service. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Everybody, welcome. I appreciate you being here this morning. So it's going to be a great day in the Lord, amen. Every day in the Lord is great, but uh, it's October 1st, great time in Iowa. In my opinion, I, I love this time of the year. I love summer too, but it's always nice to, you know, in the fall, everything's kind of cooling down and calming down. It's just you want to enjoy every minute of it because you know what's coming next. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, embrace the fall. Yeah. Yes. Amen. All right. Thank you again for being here, and if, uh, if you will, uh, Sheila, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. I want to begin there at 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want to talk to you about the kingdom of God and how, uh, how it actually operates and how we should be conscious of this and actually functioning in it, Amen. A lot of times we have a tendency in, in Christianity to always kind of put stuff out in the future. Like, it's going to happen, this is going to happen, we're going to do this. This stuff has happened. It's just a question of us tuning into it, amen, and becoming one with it, amen. So the scripture here says, and this is one that used to just bug the heck out of me because uh, it always seemed like it was correcting. <laughs> and uh, I've heard a lot of messages preached about this, but uh, I want to share something a little bit different with you. Study to show yourself, thyself approved unto God, a workman that he does not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, from a religious perspective, God immediately sends me into this work, 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 work for Jesus, you know. And uh, if I study enough, then I'll know how to do the work that i got to do. Amen? But what he's actually saying is he's study. Look at the Word of God to find your approval. Mm -hmm. not, not your condemnation, not your what you've got to do or what you should do, but look in the Word of God and find that God has approved you. Yes. You are approved. And then it goes on to say, so that you won't be ashamed. Wow. Hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We need to look in here, see that, hey, mm -hmm. we're accepted in the beloved. Yes. We are approved of God, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. All that you had to be ashamed of, Jesus took. He's already carried the shame, the guilt, the, the, the failure, praise the Lord. He was disapproved of God so that we could be approved. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. All right, now that's kind of the premise of, for where we're going here, but at the same time, look at Luke now. Let's go to Luke chapter 19, uh, verses 10 and 11. Luke 19, 10 and 11. Praise the Lord. So, we're already approved. We're shameless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not the next word. <laughs> we're, uh, amen. We have nothing to be condemned over. Shamed of. Right. Amen. We're not shameless. <laughs> well, I might be. <laughs> we're really not. <laughs> so, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, now he's talking to these Jewish people. And he's telling them, me, the Son of Man, has come, Jesus of Peter, to seek and to save that which was lost. And when they heard these things, he added and spake a parable. Because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. These are Jews. They have a, uh, an understanding of the Torah. 
They know a Messiah is to come. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus starts talking this stuff, they go, whoa, wake up. He's here. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is here. Mm -hmm. Now here's the problem. They're hearing a message of salvation and eternal life, and it sparks this expectancy in them that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. Yeah. Right? They, you know, because he didn't come the way that they thought he was going to right. come, because they were they were expecting the overthrow of Rome, the the whole system to be changed, you know, the political system, the, the, the whole thing was going to be overturned. Mm -hmm. God was going to be on the throne, and that would be it. Amen? And because of that expectancy and that, that misunderstanding, they missed the coming of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now I wonder, here's the question I ask myself. In our time, and because of preconceived ideas and admittedly some bad theology, we're missing this present reign. Mm -hmm. yes. The present reality of the kingdom of God. Yes. These people were looking for a natural kingdom. But he came to bring a spiritual kingdom. The kingdom has come. Yes. Now, you know the definition of procrastination? To, procre to procrastinate is to, uh, to just not take an hour for an answer. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We always want it to be just not quite now. Pretty soon, won't be long, but now. Mm -hmm. We need to take an hour for an answer. We need to realize that this God yes. is a God of the now. now. Amen. Amen. Look at John uh, 18, verses 36 and 37. Well, stay with me for a little while because I, I'm going to show. I want to show you some things here this morning, but uh, I'm not saying this to put us in some kind of anxiety trip. But to understand, everything we need, we've got. Mm -hmm. we, it's easy as humans to say, if I pray a little bit more, if I do a little yeah. bit more of this, yeah. if I do a little, more, if I have, do something else, something it'll happen. Yeah. No, it, it has happened. It's yes. happened. And we are the ones that reveal yes. this. Yes. Praise the Lord. So Jesus answered, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. Hence, Pilate therefore said unto him, art thou a king then? Jesus answered, thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Now just leave that up there for a moment. Now what, what he's saying here is that we get this idea that it's somewhere else, that it's off someplace else. But Jesus didn't say that his kingdom, kingdom was not for this world. He just said it wasn't of this world. And we, we kind of put our own spin on that and our own translation to that a lot of times in our own way of thinking. He said it's not of this world. So in other words, what he's saying is its source is from above and not beneath. Right. The source of this kingdom doesn't come from man. Right. It comes from the Lord. Amen? Yes. It's not political. It's no. not religious. No. It's not military. It's not economically driven by the systems of man. It's a totally different thing. Amen? Jesus said if, if, if that was true, if, if it was just another system like the one on the earth, or it's just going to be a, a more powerful uh, earthly kingdom, if he, he said if that were the case, then my servants would fight so that you couldn't deliver me to the Jews. Yeah. We'd whip up on all of you and, and I'd just take over. We'd just do like most earthly kingdoms do, and that's by power, yeah. amen, or by financial maneuvering, we just overthrow you. Yeah. He said, I can do that, but that's not the kind of kingdom that I bring. Right. Amen? The nature of this kingdom is spiritual. Yes. Now, the kingdom was real, and we know it was because the king had come. Yes. Right. Get me a king if you don't have a kingdom. Right. So, heaven had begun to invade the earth, amen, through the person and through the work of Jesus Christ, the Messiah King. So the, the kingdom was coming and it was invading the earth and it was doing it through the power and the person of Christ and what he was doing. Supernaturally, amen, in a natural realm. Yes. So the kingdom was at hand and of his increase, or of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Right. 
Praise the Lord. The kingdom would be released like leaven. And by the power of the Spirit, it would infiltrate every aspect of this world, every system of man, until the whole thing was leavened. No leaven, 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 the whole lump, right? And that's what he's saying. The book of Revelation says that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and His Christ, and we shall reign on the earth. That's us. We shall reign on the earth. That doesn't mean someday in heaven. That's talking about here and now, amen, and everywhere we live. Praise the Lord. Matthew 13, verse 33. Praise the Lord. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which I just mentioned, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. So the one, the one definitive reality or truth about the kingdom is that it's ever increasing. Amen. It's always growing. It's always expanding. It's a spiritual kingdom, but its effects are seen in the natural world. Am I right about it? I mean, that's what Jesus came and the kingdom was in. He said, the kingdom's there. It's, it's going to be in you. Amen. And we saw the results of it. We see manifestations of it in the natural realm, although you couldn't see the kingdom itself. You could see the evidence of that kingdom through the manifestations that happened in the, that happened in the natural world. And it manifested every time Jesus healed the sick, whenever he raised the dead, whenever he cast out a demon, you know the kingdom has come. Praise the Lord. We ought to be casting out some more devils. We ought to be healing more sick. We ought to be raising the dead. That way people know the kingdom's here. Amen. This is just a, a, you know, an intellectual kind of what I'd like to think it is, or maybe I hope it is. I see the evidence of that. But we want to see, amen, the kingdom come. Yes. Amen. amen. With the king of this kingdom living inside of us, the king of this kingdom yes. is living inside of you, yes. amen. If you are a believer, yes. amen, we have received a kingdom mandate to do those works and greater works. Yes. Praise the Lord. The kingdom should be affecting everything that we come into contact with. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right. Matthew chapter 6, verse, uh, I'm going to read a little bit here. Matthew 6, 25 through 33, Sheila. Matthew 25 or excuse me, Matthew 6, 25 through 33. Now, try to keep this in your mind because I'm going to come back to it later on. I'm not going to focus on it too much right now, but I'll, I'll come back here. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and body than raiment. <clears throat> Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why taking thought for raiment, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so did clothe the grass of the field, which, is, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall we not much more clothe thee, clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Or, in other words, all the unbelievers are looking for the same stuff. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And a lot of times we've had this backwards. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of God is the last thing instead of the first thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I'm not, I believe in prosperity. I believe in healing. I believe in deliverance. I believe in, in all of this. I really do. Yes. But the kingdom of God often becomes secondary to those things. Praise the Lord. I believe in prosperity. Jesus said He came to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. He came to preach the deliverance of those in captivity, the opening of the blind eye. This is all part of His message. So I'm, yes. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I'm saying the kingdom has to come first. Mm -hmm. and because we're, we're a lot of times yes. being Pentecostal in our thinking, 
we just do the stuff. All right. We just want the stuff. Nothing wrong with that. He says it's supposed to be for us. All right. But there's, there is a way that it works. Yes, Lord. And you don't get the stuff without the kingdom. No matter how much you need it, no matter how much you want it, the kingdom has to come first. And His righteousness. Yes. Praise the Lord. Lord. So, the blessing of the Lord makes a man rich and adds no sorrow with it. I know a lot of people that have a lot of money that are miserable. Well, I don't know a lot of people that have a lot of money. I know some people. That have a lot of money. And they're not all happy. The money doesn't make you happy. The money, if you are if you're satisfied, if you're fulfilled, amen. Money is a huge blessing. Yes, it is. But if you're a miserable person, unhappy about everything, money just makes you a rich, miserable person. Amen. So the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow. Verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So, just looking at it in the natural, just reading the scripture, the first issue that has to be settled is righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Righteousness is the first dimension of the kingdom. Amen. Now you cannot now you can start to see this, amen. Yep. That if you don't understand that you are the righteousness of God right. in Christ, this other stuff is going to be a problem for you. Right. It's going to be hard to get the stuff right. if you don't understand who you are in Christ. If you don't understand the first dimension of this, it's hard to get past that, amen, to anything else. The first dimension is you are righteous in Him. In the kingdom, God has made you righteous. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. So if you don't know that you are the righteousness of God, you're probably not getting your stuff. Therefore, your hope is being deferred and you're depressed and bummed out and anxious all the time. That, that just describes about 75% yeah. of the church because we're struggling for yeah. stuff without actually understanding that the way this thing works is you are the righteousness of God in Christ. If you seek the kingdom and His righteousness, yes. He makes you righteous. That's how that works. Then the stuff will just come and flow. It's a natural result. Amen. Yes. Of that reality. So John the Baptist, over 2,000 years ago, he declared that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus comes on the scene and He declares that the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nobody was ever qualified as being righteous under that old covenant. No one. Except Jesus. Alright? Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Romans 3, 20 through 22. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified or made righteous, in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Because there's no difference. The new covenant, our righteousness is not earned, it's a gift, it's free. Mm -hmm. Amen? Romans 5.17 We reign in life. Amen. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, for all these generations from Adam to Jesus, death reigned. Yep. Amen. By one. Much more, they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness yep. shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. We should be reigning in life. In life. Not in eternity, in the future, but now, right now. Amen. All right, what part of a gift don't we understand? Yeah. Now, I, I mean, it, for a lot of people, and myself included, it's awkward for somebody to give me something. Now, I love it. I, I'm grateful. I, 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 I say praise the Lord, bless that person, and thank you, Lord, for using them. But it can be awkward. Yeah. Somebody just do something for you, yeah. and you really can't do anything in return, or you can't do what... <laughs> You know, what you would normally have to do to receive that thing. Mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's why you say it's, you know, it's better to give than to receive. It's just more comfortable to give than to receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm grateful. Don't get me wrong. I, you want to give me something, 
So what? I'll, I'll deal with my awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Probably, but I'm just saying. We all know that. It's just kind of, you know, just kind of a strange feeling mm -hmm. to be on the receiving end. It's a good thing, but it's, it can be mm. uncomfortable sometimes. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. But we need to grasp this gift. It's a gift. Yes. Say, well, I don't... No, you don't deserve it. If that's why it's called a gift. Right. It's free. It's just a gift. All right? For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's the only way it can work. You can't get this any other way. You just have to receive it as a gift. And through this abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness he talked about in Romans 5, 17, we can reign in life right now. Amen. If you're reigning, what you say, you get. If you're Amen. If you're of the royal household and you say something, buddy, there are things happening to make that come to pass. Yes. The angels, messengers of God, amen, come to minister to the saints. When they, when they hear what we're saying, and if what we're saying is in agreement with the Word of God, they're hustling around, they're trying to make it come to pass. They're going to try to make that manifest. That's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. They are servants of the royal household. Yes. Which is us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now that word reign is a kingdom word, as I just defined it. We are ruling and reigning together with Christ right now in this present world. Yes. Amen. When you settle the righteousness issue, the first dimension of this kingdom, once you have that settled, the second dimension of the kingdom starts to manifest. It won't manifest without the first. Because there's a progression. We've already read it. But if you get, once you get that first dimension settled, the fact that I am the righteousness of God in Christ, in spite of me, yes. in spite of everything else, that's who I am. That's my yes. identity. Yes. Praise the Lord. Then the next dimension begins to manifest, which is peace. Amen. 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 Right standing with God. Amen. Jesus made peace for us through His blood sacrifice at the yes. cross. Peace between us and God. Yes. A sense of being loved. Mm -hmm. Confidence in your relationship with God. So once you have that confidence, then your faith can reach a whole new level. In any kind of relationship, if you're not confident of the love of the other person, it's going to be an awkward relationship. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to feel like you always have to do something more mm -hmm. to get their affection. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what God has done for us. He said, yes. I'm totally satisfied. Yes. I'm completely yes. in love with you. I can't yes. change my yes. mind about it. No matter what you do, no matter how much you screw up, I can't help myself. I love yes. you. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Once you get there, if you can ever get there, the result is peace. Yes. Confidence yes. in the love. Yes. Now, he's not going to let me down. He can't let me down. He's in love with me. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Amen. 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 Faith works by love. Yes. That's right. The more you realize your love, the more your faith will grow. Yes. The more you'll be able to believe for. The more you realize how much God loves you, the more confidence you'll have in that love, and the more you'll appropriate the benefits of that love. Amen. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Romans 8. Verse 32. Can you see how we've undermined yes. the kingdom itself by preaching that God's angry, that God's mad at you, that God's going to get even with you, that God... That's all bogus. And because of that, it, it undermines the very thing God's trying to do in our life. To say, I've accepted you in the garage. You are my the, the thing that I love. Yes. Praise God. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely... Give us all things. So, if God loved me so much that He didn't hold back His only Son, why would I think that He would hold back healing? Why would I think that He would hold back the blessing? Why would I think that He would hold back prosperity? Why would I think He'd hold back any good thing if He gave us the most important thing? The most valuable thing that He had to give, He gave 
And the reason he gave it was so that I would have confidence in how much he loves me and know that I have all things now. Right. Because he's made me righteous. I have access to everything right. that the kingdom has to offer. It's the Father's good pleasure, he said, to give you the kingdom. Yeah. It's not God's, you know, twisting his arm long enough that he gives in and just gives it to you. No, it's, in, it's his good pleasure. He wants, he wants you to express yes. the kingdom. Yes. Amen. It's from the position of peace yes. and rest, yes. confidence in that love, yes. that the kingdom flows. It will not flow without that. Right. It's stagnant. It becomes damned up. Yep. Praise the Lord. It works while you rest in full assurance and confidence of the power, get this, of the seed of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because the seed of the kingdom can produce after its own kind. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark chapter 4, verses uh, 26 through 29. <coughs> She'll put it up there, but I'm going to read this uh, just out of the message Bible, just because it gives it a little, little clearer picture. So <coughs> when Jesus said, God's kingdom is like seeds or seed thrown on a field by a man who then goes to bed and forgets about it. The seed sprouts and grows, and he has no idea how it happens. The earth does it all without his help. First the green stem of grass, and then a bud, then the ripened grain. And when the grain is fully formed, he reaps. Harvest time. Praise the Lord. We're, you know, if you look at this in that light, we live in a time of perpetual harvest. We're always looking for the future harvest. But the truth is, according to the scripture, we live yes. in perpetual harvest time. Yes. In fact, the scripture says that the, the day will come when the harvesters will yep. over, or the reapers will yes. overtake the sowers. Yes. That's where we're at. That's where we're supposed to be at in the kingdom to where you're reaping where they haven't even yes. sowed. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a time of perpetual harvest. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That I encourage you. Yes. So the seed of the word, the word of the kingdom, that's this word. It's the king's words. These are words of the kingdom. And when you sow that seed of the word of the kingdom into your life, then go to bed. In other words, rest in the power of the seed. Praise the Lord. We don't know how it works. Right. Amen. I mean, we know we know the step by step directions that He gives us, but we don't really know how it works. Right. We're not God. Right. But we, that's why faith has to operate. We have faith in God because of what He's done for us. We know He's not going to withhold anything from us. Right. That's how the kingdom works. We don't need to have a, a you know a, a, a total intellectual comprehension of this. We just got to believe right. it, Amen, that's so that right. it can happen. So we just we sow the word, yeah. we take a bath. I can do that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I don't have to be some spiritual, you know, freak. No. I can sow the word. I can say what the word says and just lie down, take a little rest. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we almost have to do that because we'll try to make it happen. Yeah. Sometimes it's better for us to just go lay down. Yeah. Amen. Right. And leave it in God's hands. Sow the thing and then take a break. Right. And rest mm -hmm. in the reality. Amen. Rest in the power of the seed. We don't know how it happens. One plant, the scripture says, another one waters. God gives the increase. Yep. All I need to know, I got seed, I just sow. Yep. God will take care of it. Yep. Consider the lilies, remember? Yep. Read this moment ago. How they grow. Consider the lilies, how they grow. So I ask myself, how do they grow? Because I'm not like my wife. I just dig holes. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she actually puts stuff in it and makes things happen. But I don't know anything about that. I just dig a hole and she fills it up with something. Praise the Lord. So I ask, how do they grow? And the answer, they neither toil nor spin. That's right. Yeah. You want to grow? Praise the Lord. Most of us have a history in the toil and spin church. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, we did. That's what we were taught. That's how yes. we were raised in the church. Amen. We toiled, we labored, we struggled. We work, we strive, yeah. but you, when, when you consider the lilies, like Jesus said to do, they were arrayed in far more splendor than Solomon, who was the richest man in the world. Yeah, they were arrayed in far more splendor than all his glory. Mm -hmm. 
And it's because the power was in the seed. Glory. Praise the Lord. Yes. See, let me just preface this with, you know, lilies are a symbol of resurrection. That's why we have them Easter lilies, right? Mm -hmm. when we're celebrating the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So they're, symbolically, that's what they are. They are uh, a type of or a picture of resurrection. What well, one resurrected man, think about Jesus, died, buried, mm -hmm. goes to hell, mm -hmm. and he's born again in hell. Yeah. Praise the Lord. One resurrected person, one resurrected man, that's who this was. We're not talking yes. about God went to hell. We're talking right. about a man, yes. amen, without sin, goes to hell and gets born again, amen, wow. hallelujah, Jesus. and is raised up Lord. and seated at the right hand of God in all power, all the power of God, amen. And so we have to understand that We've been raised together with Him in the heavenly places. We are resurrected people just because we haven't died a physical death yet. We were buried with Him in baptism, hallelujah. We were raised together, hallelujah, in newness of life. We are resurrected people, hallelujah. We are, we have the ability to defeat all hell. We went into hell and defeat the whole thing. What human being will resurrect in life? We can do the same thing. That's what, that's what we are. That's who we are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let, let me sh show you this. Uh, Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2, verse 2. Amen. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 2. And, it's, and, and it's, the picture of this whole thing is Jesus talking to his bride. I know that because Sudan gave me the tape series. About <laughs> <laughs> 10 years, 15 years ago, whatever it was. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for the song of Solomon. I wasn't ready for the huggy lovey dummy. <laughs> trying to figure out how I'm in this bride and you know, all that stuff. But it was a good word. Amen. And it only took 10 years for it to start to Praise the Lord. But as the lilies among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. He's talking to us. We are the bride. Yeah, we are. Amen. And so, as the lily among thorns, thorns are a symbol of the curse. Remember? Uh, under the curse of Adam, when Adam failed, when Adam fell, he said, thorns and thistles is what you're going to have to deal with from now on. You're, you're going to have to, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to work like the devil, and there's going to be thorns and thistles all the time that you're going to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a type of the curse. It's a symbol of the curse. Amen. God cursed the ground. Amen. So that it would bring forth thorns and thistles. Amen. So man would have to work. You know what? You know what Sinai means? Where the law was given? My thorns. That's that's the that's the the definition. That's the translation. We have been redeemed from the curse of Adam and from the curse of the law. Yes. Thank you, Thorns and thistles are not an issue for no. us anymore. No. They may be around us, we may hit them, but we're not up anymore. Right. So, among thorns, no. so are my bride. The thorns are around us, but they don't have any power over us because we've been redeemed from the curse. Yes. Thank you. We have a kingdom of righteousness yes. in which we fit perfectly. Yes. And only the righteous fit. Yes. We have kingdom garments. We have robes of righteousness. Remember in the in the garden, Adam and Eve, they, were, they didn't have clothes on. They had a righteous aura or garment, you could call it. They were clothed in righteousness. Yes. It was only when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil were they exposed, was their natural condition exposed. They removed the robe of righteousness. When Jesus was crucified, what happened? They put a scarlet robe on him, the scripture says. Scarlet is a type of sin. Amen. Though your sins be as scarlet, hallelujah, they shall be white as snow. Jesus took our sin. He took our garment of sin. Adam's garment. Amen. And gave us a white robe of righteousness. Amen. Clothed uh, with himself. Yes. Praise the Lord. Solomon was never clothed so well. There 
was no Jesus to be clothed in. With all that Solomon had, he was still a beggar in comparison to us clothed in righteousness. Praise God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. So these scriptures start to take on a different context yes. when you see them in, in the context of the kingdom. Right. We start to study to show ourselves approved. Yep. Start being approved. Yep. Amen? Yep. Amen. People that don't need to be ashamed of anything. No, no. Mm -hmm. Have nothing to be ashamed of. For as many of you as, as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We have been clothed with Christ. Amen? Yes. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Mm. <laughs> that you put on the new man, which is after which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The new man, clothed in God, clothed in righteousness and holiness. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. While his kingdom is not of this world, it is in fact for this world. Mm -hmm. He just said it's not of this world, even as we are not of this world, right. but we are for this world. We are in this world for a reason. Right. And it's not just to take up space no. for 80, 90, 100 years or something until we die. We're here yes. for the kingdom, yes. the access of his kingdom. The only way yes. the kingdom has access here is through us. It got here by Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. It remains and it operates here by us. Right. The kingdom of God is within you. And because it's in you, it affects you first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why Jesus didn't have to have somebody healing. Right. He didn't have to have somebody delivering. He didn't have to have somebody prosper him. No. Amen. He just spoke. Yes. And it was. Yes. We need money for taxes. Go and run over to Sailorville and catch the first fish you find and pay our taxes. Pay mine and pay yours. I can't wait for April 15th. Because I'm sending that to the IRS. Yes. <laughs> They're not in the same kingdom, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The kingdom flows through you to everyone and everything that you contact. Praise the Lord. We are part of an ever-growing, yes. increasing yes. royal family. Yes. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. The government of which has no end. Yes. Ever increasing. John 14. Yes. Read, uh, let's read uh, uh, we'll read 1 through 14. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Now I'll show, I'm, I'm showing you what I'm talking about here. Now, I'm not saying there isn't a literal heaven and all of that. I'm just saying a lot of times we read this stuff and we read it so disconnected from the Word of God, we have these kind of cartoon... Well, maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe it's just me, so I'm not going to say that. But maybe that's kind of the way I have thought. But I'm telling you, mm -hmm. Sally and I have had conversations here over the last couple of weeks. I'm telling you, the things are a lot different than we think. Mm -hmm. there, there are some... There are some things that God wants to show us, and just like Jesus said to his disciples, you know, there's many things I'd like to share with you right now, but uh, you're not ready. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that about you. I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm saying I'm not ready. We're, we're, he's trying to take us to the place where we are ready. Yes. And it comes by hearing, and by hearing, yes. and by hearing what the Word of God is actually saying, what the Spirit is saying to us, Amen. So that He can take us further. Yes. Amen. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is speaking. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, let me just preface this by saying, if you back, if you just back up, now remember, there's no chapters or verses in this stuff. It, it, it's the Bible. It was continuous writing. That's why they called it that. Biblical. So, it was just continuous writing. The, the paragraphs, the sentences, the uh, punctuation, the... Uh, you know, the chapters and verses. So that was all added. Way, that, way, way later. Okay? So just before this, he's talking to Peter, 
And Peter says, I'm not going to let I'm not going to let him kill you. I'm, I'm hooked up here. I'm, I'm locked in. And Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Now, get this. He, to Peter, it was condemnation, but that isn't the way the Lord said it. That's just the way Peter received it after he ran him out. You know, after he, he dissed him, said, I, I don't know the guy cussing and carrying on, and I don't have nothing to do with that guy. I don't know anything about it. So this goes on, and then Jesus begins to speak here, and he says, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, don't be freaked out because of your inability to do what you thought you were capable of doing on your own. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now just continue to focus on the language here. And whether I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't know where you're going. How are we going to know where to go? Whether that goes, how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Mm -hmm. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Mm -hmm. And yet, excuse me, have you not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of me, not of myself, not of my humanity, but the Father that dwells in me, He does the works. Yeah. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the work's sake. Verily, yeah. verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Verse two, if you can go all, the, if you can get back there without too much trouble, Sheila. In my Father's house are many mansions. It's not your house. It's the Father's house. Everybody agree? Yeah. Well, my father's house or the mansion. Now we've looked at this like it's uh, where we're going to go live when we die and go to heaven. Now, it's not really, I don't believe that's really what he's talking about. But this whole chapter is not about where you're going to live. It's about God and Christ or God in Christ coming to live in us. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. That word mansion is translated abode. Mm where we abide. Amen? Yes. The abode. It's not about where you are going to live. It's about where God is going to live. Yes. Praise the Lord. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Praise the Lord. I and my Father will come yeah. and make our mansion with Him. Mm. Amen. We are the Father's house. Yes. We're not just a hut. We're not just some shelter. God lives in mansions. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus brought us into this Father-Son relationship. Under the Old Covenant, we were slaves. In the New Covenant, we were sons. But you notice he says here in verse 3, if you can get back with Suzanne or Sheila. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Look at Colossians. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I am. Where I am, you may be also. Verse 10, Believest thou that I am in the Father? The Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. I am in the Father, 
and the Father's in me. Where is he? Because whatever he is, is where he's taking you. Yes. And the answer is, he's in the Father. Yes. And the Father's in him. Yes. Now, I could get off into all kinds of stuff here, but I think we've got a whole weird idea of heaven. And God sees us as a mansion that He's willing to leave heaven to come and live in. Mm. Yes. That's why this should be the days of heaven on earth. Wow. Mm. Heaven has come. Heaven has invaded. It's just a question of whether or not we're going to wake up to the reality right. that we've been invaded. That is right. mm -hmm. that is right. Praise the Lord. So then, the place He has prepared for us is to be in the Father. And the Father in us. Man, I don't know how big this is to you, but I'm telling you, it stretches my head. This, this is a reality. We are in Him. And He is in us. We don't have to take some extraterrestrial trip to get there. We are there. We are here. We are one. He is dwelling in this mansion. In this abode is where God is. And as he's in me, I'm in him. Yes. So if I if I lose this body, I'm still in the mansion. Hmm. I still am a mansion. Yep. The only reason for this body is to give me uh, access to this planet, to this world. Hmm. The only reason for it. There's no other need for it except that here we live in a time, space, continue. We've got to fit it. we got to have, gravity has to work for us. All these things have to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I don't need any of that. I don't need any of this to be who I really am. No. To be the abode of God. Right. I need this to function on this earth. Yeah. So that God has access. Yes. Because God is a spirit. And spirits are not legal on earth. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord or not. But it's still the truth. That's why the devil has to have a body. That's why God had to have a body. That's why God had to come as Jesus. Because he was illegal here any other way. Right. Praise the Lord. I will not leave you. He has made us his dwelling place. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen? And the result is John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Mm -hmm. Where's the Father? In us. Um, isn't that what he just told us? Yeah. I'm going to the Father. The Father and I are in you. Yeah. Amen. That's why he's saying, barely, barely, I'm saying to you, I gotta go away. I've got to go to the Father because unless I go to the Father, the Father can't be in you. Yeah. We talk about it being the Holy Spirit and all that, but, but if you just look at it organically, that's what he's saying. Right. The Father is in us. Yes. In Christ, we are one. Yes. Amen. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, because I'm going to my Father, he'll do also in greater works than these. Because I go, I'm going to the abode. I'm taking you, and you are going to be the mansion, and we're going to live in you. And because of that, you can do everything I've ever done, and greater works than these shall you do. Praise the Lord. This is not fantasy. This is not some Aesop fable. It's not some hope in the future. It's not some progressive uh, experience that may happen. This is present tense reality for every one of us if we'll just agree to it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right. In order to get our heads around this, if we can get our heads around this, the result is the works Jesus did, we'll do also. And greater works than these shall we do. The kingdom is more than at hand. It's in us. Amen. Righteousness of God in Christ. Christ in us. Right. Study to show thyself approved. Yep. A workman who doesn't have to be ashamed. Mm. Because the work's all in the heaven. The work has all been done. And we have been accepted 
and the beloved so, so completely that God wants to be in us. Not just around us. Not just nearby. Not just a shadow. But right here. Living, ruling, and reigning with us. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, church, if we ever get... I'm talking about a revelation here. I'm not talking about saying, yeah, I get that. Because we right. can get it. Right, right. But until it becomes a reality, until it really becomes to live in us and live through us. See, we have glimpses of this. We have glimmers. We have experiences that are kingdom experiences. James can tell you. Don and James have healing. I, I've had a healing. It's supernatural. It, and what, what it's, it's saying what God says. However God says it, and it manifests. Amen? Right. See, God's here. He's not in this body. He's in this spirit yep. that is in this body. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. And it's perfect. Yes. Amen? Yes. And it happens because of His grace. Yes. His grace. Yes. He has come to make His abode yes. in this mansion. Yes. In my Father's house, I'm many mansions. Yes. One body. Yes. Mm -hmm. Many mansions. Yes. And that's why he says, greater works than these will this body do. The greater, that body I'm talking about is going to do greater works than this body did because greater is he that's in you yes. than he that's in the world. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I mean, it's a... It, 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 would, it would be a horrible shame to get to heaven and then find this out. No, no. If there's tears in heaven, that would be the tear. It would be like, yeah. God, what we have, the yeah. potential. Yeah. What we could have done, what yeah. we might have done. Yeah. What somebody yeah. certainly will do. Yeah. Right. Yes. Look up, he said. Mm. The fields are white and ready to yes. harvest. Was he talking about in 2040? 2015? Was he talking about 1950? Was he talking about 1760? Was he what? No, he was saying when you look up, when you get the revelation, when you understand and you really look up and begin to see through the eyes of the Spirit, yeah. you'll yeah. see the fields are right. Yes. They're ready yes. for it. Yes. It's perpetual harvest time. Yes. And that's not just talking about winning people to Jesus. It's talking about your harvest. Yes. Your spiritual inheritance. Your blessing. Healing, deliverance, prosperity, yes. all yes. that is available to us because, yes. because of us and the kingdom being in us, the kingdom affects us before it affects anybody else. You, it's, it's hard for you to believe, even for somebody else's miracle, it's easier to say it. Yeah. But it's not any easier to believe for somebody else's miracle if you can't believe right. for yourself. Right. Yeah. It's always a game, it's always just a guess working, and maybe he'll do something this time. Any time God has ever moved in your life and manifested, it has been because of the kingdom and your connection with Him. Yes. But if you understood that, and I was another thing all together. That's right. See, I don't, I just have to show it. I don't have to know how the thing works. Yeah. Hmm. I don't need to know the bi biology of it or the body, mm -hmm. the botanical truth about it. I don't need that. I don't have to know. Mm -hmm. All I got to know is seeds reproduce after their own kind. Get a seed of the kingdom, sow it, and you'll see kingdom manifestation. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. say praise the Lord. I don't need it. That's why the scripture says, renew your mind to this truth. Because once you get your mind renewed, everything else will follow. Get your mind and your spirit on the yes. same page. Your body has no nothing it can do except follow. Yeah. And that's true for healing. That's true for deliverance. That's true yes. for any situation or any circumstance yes. you find yourself in need of. Yes. He is our shield yes. and exceeding great reward. Yes. Nothing shall be impossible. That's what he's talking about. Nothing will be impossible in the belief. Yes. There will be greater works than I did because I'm going to the Father. In them. Yes. Yes. You are so full of God. If you can see how yes. big God is in you. Oh, yes. He's taking up everything. Yes. Your spirit can't be confined to your body any more than God can. Jesus. Yes. Amen. We, we are affecting 
things. Yes. Whether you know it or not, right. you're having either a positive or a negative effect on everything you come into contact with. Yes. Right. You're either having a kingdom effect yes. or you're having an earthly effect. That's right. Yeah. Depending on your approach. Yeah. Yep. Depending, depending on what you believe. Mm. If thou canst believe. Right. You can ask anything in my name. Right. How can I ask anything in, in his name? Because it's my name. Right. Because he and I are one. Because I am the bride among thorns. Yes. I have every legal right yes. to everything he has. Yes. And no court in heaven or anywhere else no. can challenge that. That's a mandate from God himself. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When we speak, is God speaking? This is not an ego trip. This isn't some big-headed thing. This is what he says. Yes. When you speak, it's Jesus speaking. If you understand the kingdom and who you are and your connection, when you open your mouth, all hell trembles for fear that you understand what it is you're doing. Because whenever you do, what happens? Cancer flees. Sickness and disease has to go. Yes. Poverty has to bow its knee yes. to prosperity. That is right. But unless you know we're like children playing in the marketplace. Right. All the financial activities taking place up here, we're down here playing in the dirt. Mm. That's where the church has been for 2,000 yeah. years. Yeah. Well, yeah. Business is being tra transacted in the heavenly realm, yeah. in the spirit realm. And we're down here playing. Yeah, I know. But Jesus, it was his, his own parable. He said, the king, the, the, this, this people of, this, uh, of today are like this, he says. They're like children playing in the marketplace. Playing a game. When we have access to everything in that market, yes. it's ours. It's time to quit playing in the dirt and rise up to who we are in Christ. And start declaring some things and changing things. Because here's the deal. I'm just talking about on a small scale here, but what God says is when this kingdom is identified, it begins to affect financial kingdoms, yep. military kingdoms, mm -hmm. political kingdoms. This kingdom will become the kingdom That's of this right. earth, yes. swallowing up every Glory. other human man-made mm -hmm. yes. system or kingdom. Yes. The kingdoms of this earth shall become the kingdoms of God, of His yes. Christ, mm -hmm and the believers. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at, church. That's, yes. that's where we're standing Jesus. right now. Yes. yes. And the, the, the generation, I believe I'm saying this in the Holy Ghost, the generation that knows this Jesus. will do great feats. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Shall never be restrained. Why? Because they've gotten the revelation of who yep. they are in God and who they are in Christ. They have gotten the mind of of Christ. Amen. That's how Jesus functioned. And we have put on the mind of Christ and began to operate just like Him and the greater works than Him. I'm telling you, yes. this is a reality. Yes. And we're, we, we get content with just going and hearing about when well, you need to be better. You can't be any better than God. Right. Can you? I mean, I don't think. No. And you are one with God. Nothing. See, this is, this is the thing that they were after. I'm just rambling now. This is the thing they were after with the Tower of Babel. We will be like God. This is Satan. I shall ascend. I'll be like God. And God said, no, you won't. And no, you won't. But you will because I'm going to bring you up. You're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. You're not going to take credit for this. I did. It's my glory. It's my power. It's my anointing. It's my gift. Yes. Lord. And when we grasp that, Nothing will be impossible. Mm. And we won't have to wait. Mm. Well, yeah. See, I just think Revelation. I told Sally the other day, it's gotten into my head. And I, I think in my heart first, I hope. But I think the book of Revelation is just a new New Testament. Glory. I think it's just the next step. Wow. Yeah. You've got the Old Covenant, you've got the New Covenant. Jesus. And that leads you right into the book of Revelation. I think we've been reading it all screwed up for years and simply because of our screwed up theology and our poor opinion and attitude about ourselves. 
and not realizing what God has already given to us, we can make the book of Revelation a reality today. Yes. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Read the book of Daniel sometime. We're not talking about future stuff unless we want it to be. Right. It could have been any time, but it ought to be at our time. Yes. We were born for such a time as this. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't care what generations before did or didn't do or what the ones in the future might. I want it to be my generation. I want it to be the one that sees this yes. coming past. Yes. And I want it because he wants it. Yes. It's the thing that drives us. Yes. Because we have his DNA. We have the same want to's, the same desires we've got inside of us. The kingdom has to come first. If we can get this. Stuff will happen. It'll just happen automatically. We, we won't have to spend hours. Right. We won't have to be going through all the contortions and the physical and, right. and mental, you know, gyrations that we go through. We, we will just say it and rest. And it. It. I mm -hmm. am Lord. Praise the Lord. Just speak it. Mm -hmm. just speak it. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? What do you want? Well, I left my hand here. Stretch it out. Yeah. <coughs> what do you want me to do? I'm blind. I can't see. You can pick your own. I hope I didn't hit anybody. <laughs> Sometimes stuff gets caught in there. <laughs> but you, see, I, you know, you see what I'm saying. To God, he, he's outside the box. And yes. we, we try to dumb everything down yes. to a human way of understanding and comprehension. Yes. And because of that, it limits God. Yes. If we can ever get... See, if you know how accepted you are, how... Perfect you are. Mm. Oh man, you, you, you can have some boldness. Yes. You can have some courage. You can dare to do the impossible. Right, right. And that's what God is trying to get across to us. The work yeah. finds your approval. Right. Thank you, God. No shame. No guilt. Just power. Just a bride and a thorn patch. Praise the Lord. Time to start kicking some thorns out. Make a room for more houses. For more mansions. For more of God. For more of the miraculous. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God bless all of you. I'm just, I just challenge you. Don't be afraid to think thoughts you haven't thought before. God's not going to be mad at you. Yeah. He'd rather see some creative thinking based on the Word of God than us just falling again into the ranks of the same old, same old, right. and just another generation passes by without ever seeing the power and the experience and the, and the glory of God. Or, it, or it's some manufactured, messed up, squirrely looking thing that, that everybody goes, if God's like that, I don't know if I want to go. Yeah. That's, you know, that's like you get invited to a party at somebody's house. Man, I know that I'm not going anywhere near that place. Yeah. They don't tell them about that. <laughs> Right? No, God's got the perfect setup. Yes. We just got to buy in. Yep. And be part of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Again. Thank you for your patience. Amen. Go in the power of His might. In Jesus' name. You're the God bless you all.